and get started today. Um, good afternoon. Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Alicia Bork and I'm the Chief Student Affairs Officer at Loyola University, New Orleans. Welcome to the Student Affairs Zoom panel session for parents about homesickness. My team and I are happy to be with you today and we hope that you and your loved ones are staying healthy and safe. Before we get started with the panel, I'd like to outline a few Zoom rules for today's call. Out of respect for the panelists and the desire to share as much information as possible, all participants except our panelists will be muted. Participants are to ask questions via the Q&A function. The chat function has been disabled in order for us to focus on the Q&A. Panelists will answer as many questions as possible in the time allotted. And thank you so much for your cooperation with these housekeeping rules. I'm gonna introduce our student and parent panelists. Today, we have Zontre City. Zontre is a senior majoring in digital filmmaking and he hails from Nashville, Tennessee. He currently serves as the vice president of our Student Government Association here at Loyola University, New Orleans. We also welcome Julie Gottlieb. She is the mother of a Loyola sophomore who is also majoring in digital filmmaking. She's employed at Fairfield University in Connecticut, which happens to be a fellow Jesuit institution. So welcome to you both and thank you so much for being here. Um, just gonna provide a quick run of show. Uh, we'll spend uh, approximately 15 to 30 minutes on questions for our panelists, then another 15 on uh, campus resources available to students, and then we'll conclude with our Q&A and sharing a few more online uh, resources. So let's get started with our panel questions. Julie, this question um, starts with you. Um, can you tell us a little bit um, about what your students' experience was like with being homesick? Sure. Um, I'm going to start with a caveat because I know every every student is different and everyone's child and parent relationship is different. And I am not an expert by any means, so I can only say what's uh, what has worked for us. Um, so my son, Sam, as, uh, as you heard, is a digital filmmaking uh, major and a sophomore. Uh, was not homesick in the beginning. He was very happy to be 1,200 miles away from us and being independent and living his best life. He's an only child, so that might explain why. Um, and he had a great first semester, uh, a couple of initial stops and starts, um, uh, but he found friends and nearly all of them were exchange students. And so they all went home at the end of the first semester and he was back to square one. So uh, my first piece of advice is when making friends diversify. Um, uh, second semester was hard. He was uh, lonely. He uh, had a difficult time making connections. And I did, I think, what, what most of us do. We recommend, you know, join a club, volunteer, um, you know, pounce on people in the hall when you see them doing laundry. Um, but my son's personality is, is such that he's not really a, a joiner like that. And he chose not to do that because he prefers a more organic approach. And I think while that um, may not have worked well as what I would have suggested or thought, um, I thought it was important to remember that it's his choice and then he should be, he should be making the decisions in college and how he wants to, um, you know, live his life without my shepherding, shepherding that, that, that process. So. Thank you, Julie. Zantre, the same question is for you, uh, but obviously from the student perspective, what was your experience like with being homesick? Hi everyone, so um, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, which is quite a bit of distance from New Orleans. And it, it's so interesting how Ms. Julie stated how everyone's different, every student's different, because my experience was completely different um, I instantly felt some form of homesick once I got to campus. Once my parents and my family said, goodbye, Zantre, 
have fun, call us if you need us. Once they did that, I instantly knew that I was in for a ride of homesick, uh, homesickness. So that was interesting. Um, it was also just coming from a high school that was, my high school was like a middle school as well. It was fifth through 12th grade. Um, so I had a really close group of friends, a uh, really close group of friends who ended up going to a lot of colleges together. So a lot of them just stayed together and stayed with that same group of, uh, same community. So I would often be looking at my Snapchat and I would be seeing people like hanging out with the same friends or I would be like, whoa, their life seems amazing. College is great for them. Um, so that was something I had to deal with from the beginning was that feeling of like, whoa, like was this meant to be? Did I force this? And um, also just the student in me and, and probably the, a bit of the Gen Z in me, I didn't want to tell my parents that I was homesick. I didn't want them to know that um, I maybe made a wrong decision of what college I went to, which it wasn't that at all, but I didn't want to give them that satisfaction. So I, um, I just uh, held it in. My parents did a really good job of finding ways to balance out um, that homesickness, which I'm sure, sure we're going to talk about in a few, but that was kind of my experience with um, instantly feeling that homesickness and seeing my friends on Snapchat and Instagram living their best life. Thank you, Zantre. Um, Julie, next question mm -hmm. for you. Um, what were the top, I think you alluded this to, uh, alluded to these in your, your first commentary, but what were the top three ways would you say that you supported your student through homesickness? Sure. So um, I want I want you all to know I fact checked these with my son ahead of time to make sure that what I thought was amazing and useful um, actually was useful. Um, so these were approved, and he actually um, had uh, had some interesting comments, which which I'll I'll share. I think number one for us was to listen. Um, that you know, he says that was really the most important thing that that we were there but we weren't jumping in with solutions. You know, we allowed him to purge and be sad and emotional and frustrated and all over the map. Um, and, but we ourselves didn't, you know, show those emotions yourself. And that's, that's really hard to do as a parent because your kid is unhappy. And it's easy, I think, to get sort of pulled into that, into that current and, and ride that with them. Um, so I think just, just, listening and not interrupting and and um, not trying to solve everything or lecture or um, throw out a million suggestions. I think in a lot of cases they just, or at least my child wanted, just the opportunity to get it all out there and, and talk about what was going on. Um, and then I think, you know, after an emotional storm or a bad phone call, um, and, and there weren't a, a ton of these, so I don't want to make it sound like he was, you know, we were doing this every night. Um, I think what worked was to keep in touch, but to keep it light. So, you know, I would send a text the next day and it wasn't like, oh, do you feel better? Did you meet anybody? You know, did you choose the wrong school? It was, it was more, um, we're big film buffs in my family. So it was really more, okay, did you see this article in Variety about um, this particular casting news? Nothing about what we talked about but it was it was a touch point that let him know we're thinking about him but it was a no pressure touch point and it didn't necessarily pull him back into um sort of the the pit of homesickness um and i think another thing that's that's handy to remember in terms of listening is you want them to move forward they they tend to be on an emotional roller coaster anyway and then you plop them into college and it's all new and everything's they're so everything's just shaky and, and they're not used to it and sometimes they've already moved on so like you have these calls or and and everything's bad and terrible and 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 then you hang up and you're lying awake at night staring at the ceiling thinking should I get in the car should I start looking at how you transfer your second semester and they've moved on in a lot of cases on to the next the next thing so kind of keep it's really easy to get pulled in and and you so you want to like have your foot in the pool but don't you know um don't be sure you get you know you get you get pulled under too um the second top away i'm not sure it's a way but it was something i tossed out on a call my son pointed this out to me when i told him what i was doing and and i said to him you know nobody has any idea what they're doing and don't pay attention to social media and he said that was 
something he heard at the moment and then kept coming back to as he started to really pay attention to his surroundings, that everybody is lost and freaked out and clueless, even the ones who are putting on a good front. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, again, easy to hear about the kid who joined a sorority and, and she's blissfully happy, or this boy went and did Frisbee and now he's found friends for life. And, and that may be true and that may be well and good, but I, I think the majority of them are um, floundering and, and trying to find their way. So just remind them of that and don't pay any attention to social media. Um, nobody posts that they're utterly miserable or they're having a hard time making friends or it's Friday night and they're, they're flipping through Netflix looking for something to do. They're going to post the good stuff. So don't get sucked into that. And as a parent, don't get sucked into what you're hearing other parents say about that as well. And then the last thing, and I'm sorry, this is, this is kind of long. Um, information is, is your friend. Again, my son wanted to say, and I thought this was kind of an interesting take. He said, one of the things, and I think it is part of homesickness, um, is being anxious and overwhelmed. That was his biggest issue. And we did a lot of work both before he went to school and then while he was at school, and we still do it to some extent, getting him organized and compiling resources, you know, how do you get onto how connect? Where do you find study abroad stuff? What are the instructions for unlocking your mailbox? Because I looked at that a year ago and now I don't remember. Um, you know, where do I find the academic calendar? How do I register? What are the pharmacies near me? These are things that are all out there and available. Um, but we do shared notes. We did a binder. Again, that just worked for us because he felt it lowered his anxiety and then that put him in a better place to be dealing with um, bigger feelings and challenges. And I think, you know, as a parent, and you, this is like, don't run into the helicopter snowplow mode, but you can educate yourself so that you can make informed suggestions and have answers when they have simple questions. You know, read the Friday Five, read the emails that come to the parents, take a look at the website. Um, get on the Loyola Parents Facebook page. Um, look at all the social media accounts. There's all sorts of goodies in student life and in ministry and all those things. Um, so that you, you're kind of speaking from a, you know, you don't want to be a fellow student, but it helps to kind of know what exists and what the resources are so that you can, you can share those. You know, we have an agreement. And, you know, I'll see something that I think might be an opportunity to engage. And I'm allowed to send a screenshot, but I say nothing in the text, and then I don't ask him if he did anything with it. It's just a, hi, look at that, and, and then we move on. Um, and then speaking of resources, and I know you're gonna obviously talk about this, um, mental health and success coaches. Um, part of my job at the university is I do, well, I'm not in student life, um, but we do a lot of research on um, obviously what's happening in higher ed. And, um, you know, depending on where you look, roughly two thirds of college students are really, um, really very anxious and or depressed and or homesick, particularly because of COVID. So I think it's, it's important to know those resources, know what's available um, in mental health, which you'll be hearing about, I'm sure. Success coaches, make sure your child knows where, because they just need that one person and I think in addition to you, uh, encouraging them to use, you know, kind of broaden their circle. It's another weapon in their arsenal. Um, and these are people who know the school and the campus um, probably better than we do and, and how to talk to the kids. So um, I think that was absolutely, um, uh, my son had a good relationship with his success coach and I think that was helpful too. And the very last thing, and then I'll stop, I'm sorry. Um, remember how they were when they were really little. So you would pick them up from the school bus or whatever, and the teacher would say, oh, great day. This is when they were really little. And they're so good and they're so wonderful and all the rest of that. And you get them home and everything would fall apart. And you'd have tantrums and misery and all the rest of that. It's kind of the same thing. They're just a lot older. And they just need, you are their safe space and you are their sounding board and they just need to they just need to do that 
um, distracting works, just like with small people. Um, Sandra, don't take this personally. <laughs> you can um, mail a treat, put 10 bucks in their Venmo, send them a card. It, those little, it, was, it was easier to do some of these things when there wasn't social distancing, but a little distraction. And then some redirect when you're talking to them. Sense when it might be healthier to maybe move the conversation on to a lighter topic and not get lost in the bad stuff. Pay attention and listen, but not get lost in it. Sorry, that was a lot. And I'm done. That's great, Julie. Thank you so much. So I was taking notes as you were talking uh, because I'm a psychologist by profession. And so I'm going to summarize a little bit about what you said because it's really beautiful. Um, it sounds like you and your family made a really nice plan on how to navigate homesickness together. Um, you engaged in active listening on both sides, um, managing social media, expectations, um, uh, how much time spent, those sorts of things. And then it sounds like you stayed organized um, and it really helped to uh, make sure that you were remaining in control of those things that you can control. So accessing re uh, resources, staying informed. Um, and it sounds like um, you also took perspective of when your son was younger, noting some of those behavioral cues that oh, my child must be really hungry or my child must need a break from whatever it is that is happening in his or her life or their life at the time. So seeing those same cues for support and offering that I thought was really beautiful. Um, and then finally, um, those little ways to stay connected emotionally, reading those cues so that you can help them to regulate uh, emotionally when that might not be happening for themselves at the time. So appreciate that very much. Appreciate that sure. perspective. All right, Zantre, um, what about you? What are the top three ways that your parent helped support you through your homesickness feelings? Right. So um, thinking and just preparing for this panel, I realized how much I need to thank my parents for all that they did because at this point, um, I honestly don't even remember. Um, I mean, of course, I remember aspects of it, but as much homesickness as I felt and how much I wanted to go home, it's so hard for me to think through that. Like right now as a senior who's like barely going home, who loves my family, loves my family, but still, you know, just really involved in the Loyola community. So um, definitely have to thank my parents after this call. Um, but I can boil down, <clears throat> I can boil down the three things that they did um, to being, being there, um, reminding me who I am and just encouraging a sense of structure. So first up with being there, every time I was needing them, anytime um, I needed someone to vent to, anything like that, even if it wasn't directly about like, hey, I'm having trouble making friends, they were always there and they were always willing to have that conversation with me. And I really appreciate it. Um, I also like that they normalize it. Like Ms. Julie said, everyone is going through some sense of like, um, homesickness or and she, my mom would, would constantly remind me like this is just an aspect of life like I she was saying even me as as an adult woman like I have sometimes I have trouble making friends or I have trouble with these kinds of things so um, just reminding us that like we're going into adulthood and we're not supposed to have everything figured out was super nice and just my parents just being there and constantly um, giving me that lift up that I needed sometime uh, secondly was reminding me who I am my parents, um, I'm a very interesting, complex, as I'm sure most of your children are, um, individual where I like to do a lot of different things. And it's, sometimes it's easy to forget who we were when we were in high school, or even middle school, like what we enjoyed to do, like what was, um, yeah, what was our hobby? So my parents tried their best to like remind me, like, have you looked into doing something like this? Oh, we know you were interested in theater, even though that's not your major. Like, have you seen any productions on campus? Like reminding me of things that I could do that um, could, could remind me of home essentially, because oftentimes when we think of homesickness, we think of it as being like friends and having a sense of community, but it's also, it's just like remembering who you are and your identity as a young adult. So uh, that was really helpful, them just reminding me who I was. And also in a sense of friendship, it's not gonna be, it, it's never easy making really good friends that I've noticed. Like it always is a challenge. It always is something that takes time. So even if you're not making friends, once you get to college, like that's okay. Like 
the friends that I have now as a senior, I didn't meet them until like second semester, like the, the closest friends I have. So understanding that now, I think that it was really good. My parents reminded me of like, yo, it's not going to be easy. You work hard, like you're going to get through it always. And finally, just creating a sense of structure. Um, I think me having, it, it's, it's easier to, to dwell on what you don't have when you have ample amount of time to do that. And I know during this time of like uncertainty and everything going on, it probably is, is hard, uh, easier said than done. But just reminding me of, of ways to create a sense of structure. Like if you enjoy reading, like have you read a book today? Like uh, my parents encouraged me to work a job. Like they were just saying like, do whatever you can to create some sense of a schedule, some sense of structure, because ultimately that's how you find friends and that's how you rem uh, remember, you know, who you are and, and what you want to do on campus for sure. Thank you, Zantre. So to summarize um, your information, it sounds like um, gratitude is going to be at the top of your list after this call and reaching out to your parents. Um, and then you noted presence and normalizing. And so um, whatever that presence looks like for a family, just being able to identify that and continue with that. Um, it sounds like it's also it was also a value for them to remind you of your values and grounding you in your experiences and interests, almost like re recreating home, but in a different place, so that you felt that emotional emotional connectedness and um, did the best that you could maybe when things weren't going so well. Um, and it's a marathon, not a sprint for friendships, which I think is very good advice. So thank you for that. Um, Sandra, I'm going to come right back to you to ask, um, what is your most important tip for our current families, especially during the time of COVID? Um, my most important tip, I know that this is probably the most cliche thing and everyone probably gets tired of me saying it all the time, um, but you really do have to um, try to get involved as much as you can. Like, I know that, that Zooming sometimes, it, we all are fatigued from it. We all get tired from it, um, but literally just doing the most that you can to get involved. That's how friendships are made. Like that's how, um, even if you're, they're not your closest friends, it's really nice to just have a space, get your mind off things. So I definitely always encourage people to, to find ways to get involved and also just like finding ways to get out, get outside of their room. Um, I understand right now, you know, it's COVID going on. It's a lot of things that, that we have fears of, but um, I can ensure you that our campus is doing a lot right now to have study spaces, like sit down in the rest squad, like make yourself, you know, do your best to get outside your room um, because it really, really does help. Thank you, Zantre and Julie. Same question, please. Yeah, I talked a lot on the other one because uh, this, this one, this one's tough. Um, uh, I won't lie. I think this semester has been really hard. Um, I'm seeing it professionally on our campus and, um, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing that certainly from my son. All of his friends except for one chose to be remote and his best friend from home is in Hawaii this semester and um, likes to FaceTime and share all the, all the wonderful things she's doing on a regular basis and he's sure he made the wrong decision uh, not joining her. Uh, and he's also in, in, in Founders, which is, we like to call it the dorm you've never heard of on a Broadway campus that's, that's, that's small. So the, the one or two friends he does have on campus are on the main campus. And of course, there's not a lot of uh, interactions. So, um, you know, I was writing all this stuff on Monday and thinking about what I wanted to say and and uh, kind of patting myself on the back after having, you know, a good call with Sam over the weekend about, you know, what had worked and whatever. And then, of course, he calls Monday night and and uh, he's miserable and everything's bad and it's never going to get better. And um, so it, it just, you know, it always it, it, it comes back to get you. Um, I, I think what they're going through is so hard. And and, you know, I think, you know, it's Andre said that that's really important, I think. But I think it's also easy just to. Um, to, to get fatigued by it all. I think it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and I think we have to be, you know, our role is, 
is to be reassuring that you know that we can't see it you're right none of us can see it and i and we have but we have to trust that it's there and then it's going to get better um i find we're having some not that we don't have adult conversations but that it's an opportunity to have more adult conversations with with your child about choices and forks in the road and being flexible and resilient and um and and learning experiences these aren't things that necessarily again address homesickness but they they are you know we've been treating them as as opportunities to to focus on the future, to find ways to, you know, to talk about things like, okay, what happens if you can't do study abroad, which for um, Sam's major, uh, my understanding is that they, they all have to kind of go junior year first semester because then they're doing films and senior project and they can't go in another time. He's like, what happens then? What happens then? I said, well, then we look at, we look at possibilities. We look at maybe you take a semester off so that you can start later and and do something else. Maybe we, maybe the summer program with travel will come back. So I think it again. It's just it, it's you know it sounds so trite again. Um, it's listening, you know, and encouraging to try to think positively if you can. Understanding that that isn't always going to happen. Um, to work through things when you can, to back off when you can't, um, uh, to keep talking, to find little pleasures if you can, um, whatever, whatever, whatever those might be. Um, and that's that's all I have on that one. This was this one was a was a tough one, and maybe maybe that's comforting or not comforting um, that 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 i think everybody is is in the same boat that that you and your child are are not alone in this great thank you zantre thank you julie um i truly appreciate your authenticity um uh the practicality of the information that you shared and also identifying those universal themes that can be ap applicable across um, different families and experiences. And so now I'd like to turn the panel over to my colleagues in student affairs. Each team member will introduce themselves and then they'll share information about available resources. Amy, um, let's go ahead and start with you, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Boyle. I'm the Director of Residential Life and so um, much uh, related to what Julie and Zantre have described. Um, I've seen um, firsthand both success and challenges with students and parents as they're trying to navigate homesickness in a normal year and then also what that looks like as we're in the midst of a pandemic. So um, what my office does on a number of levels for support is um, primarily peer support with our resident assistant program but then also professional support, uh, support and advisement with our community directors who are our full-time live-in professionals. Um, all of them uh, have received master's degrees or are currently in progress to a master's degree either in student development um, or counseling. And so um, that gives them a really uh, wide lens in terms of how they look at um, student support uh, from a holistic perspective. And so um, that support can look like anything from one on one conversations, small group meetings, particularly now with um, small groups of students or roommates. Um, we have a variety of programming happening right now, both virtual and in person, um, which aims to give flexibility for those students that feel comfortable um, and would like to have in person interactions. And then also for those when when we want to have a larger group type meeting that we can have that um, and include everyone virtually. Um, so some of your students, particularly in some of our first year halls will see a lot of um, smaller group activities happening with 10 or less people so that they can actually gather in um, residence halls and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of that space that Zantre was talking about in our resident squad um, is quite active these days, probably more active than I've ever seen it um, in the evenings, especially. So actually last night we had um, some of our staff going and handing out t-shirts to 
students who were appropriately distancing and masking just to thank them for all of the hard work because um, the fatigue on so many levels, not just including Zoom, is, is a challenge. Um, and so layer that on top of just being away from friends and family. So um, our staff is available 24-7, 365 um, for both virtual and in-person assistance. And we look forward to continuing to help you. Asia, I think you're next. Yes, I was unmuting, sorry. You would think at this point I would be expert at that, but still. Um, so my name's Asia Wong. I am a licensed clinical social worker and I am the director of the University Counseling Center and Student Health. Um, in orientation, you may have heard me say that my team's job is to help your student stay happy, healthy, and well which as you can imagine this year is a tall order. Um, we do try to have a collaborative relationship with parents. So if you ever have any concerns about your students' well-being, feel free to give us a call and consult. We'll talk about best approaches. I think Julie's answer was lovely about how to manage health, uh, uh, homesickness and is very congruent uh, with a lot of the support that we tell parents. Um, my biggest tip for y'all is to remember that the safe space to have a sounding board, to cry it out without worrying that that means you're going to get yanked home or that you're going to get in trouble or that you're going to be embarrassed the next day is one of the most valuable things you can provide for your child. So a place where they can go and be at their saddest or the lowest and just know that you're there to hear them um, is invaluable, even though terribly worrisome, obviously, as a parent. Thank you for all you do to support your children in their wellness, and we are here to help you with that. Hello, everyone. My name is Dale O'Neill. I serve as the Director of Student Life and Ministry at Loyola. Um, our office is pretty much a one-stop shop for all student engagement outside the classroom. So we do everything from retreats to student orgs. We have about 130 of them, um, community service programs, fraternities and sororities, social justice programs, um, Christian life communities, which are small faith sharing communities that meet on a weekly basis, worship, interfaith. So we, we basically, like I mentioned, one-stop shop for all student engagement. Um, all of my staff is always um, willing to meet with students um, to talk about their interests and to determine where we can help them find a community on campus. Um, I know sometimes when a student is homesick, them maybe reaching out to us is a little intimidating, um, but we're always willing to do that. Um, I'm also always willing to talk to parents and caregivers about what their students' interests are and maybe brainstorm with them um, some suggestions that you all can make to those students to make sure to help them find a community on campus. Um, some things that to keep in mind, uh, Julie did a great job in talking about our different resources. Um, and just to emphasize some of them, how connect is our student engagement software um, all students can log in and they can see all the events going on on campus um, as well as the student organizations and you can filter your search of student events from virtual and on ground um, like amy boyle mentioned um, we do have a hybrid of both virtual and on ground events so they can go in and look to see what's interesting um, and they can pop on um, I always encourage students, go to these events, go to a, a club meeting. What's the worst that can happen? You don't like it and then you don't go back. Um, there's no commitment. If you show up to a club meeting one day and you don't show up again, that's okay. Um, and one of the only good things of COVID is in this virtual world, you can jump into a Zoom event or a Zoom meeting. If you don't like it, you can just quickly X out within the first five or 10 minutes, that's okay. Um, so encouraging them to explore um, 
uh, is my biggest piece of advice. Um, and in this COVID world, um, they can do that both virtually and in person. You can also look at the public events on How Connect. Um, some of the, the events on How Connect is just for specific students, but you can also just go in and see all the public events too, if you're curious. And then a couple other things. Um, we sent out a weekly five things to know to all students. Um, and we also shared that on our social media as well as the parents Facebook group. Um, that's really helpful for you to know what is going on on campus this week and resources for your student this week. I love Julie's comment about how she takes screenshots of things and just sends it to her student, doesn't ask questions, doesn't necessarily follow up or feel pressure, make him feel pressure to follow up, but just sharing those resources. So I would definitely suggest um, reading our five things to know each week that we send out to students that we post on social media. Um, also, our social media is very active, both Instagram and Facebook. We do have a lot of parents who follow our social media and we post all day, every day. So if you are on social media, I would definitely recommend following our, especially our Facebook page. Um, and then two other things I forgot to mention, our office has um, a priest on staff and our university ministers are available for spiritual direction. So if your student is interested in that, we can provide that to them. Um, we also have resident ministers who live in the residence halls on site that can also assist if your student is in need on campus. Um, we also have a staff member in our office who works with commuter students. So if your student is a commuter student, we do have resources for them as well. Um, in a, I will share my email address um, in the chat if you have any questions or concerns, but thank you so much for being here um, and best of luck. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Diana Ward. I'm the Chief Student Conduct Officer and Title IX Coordinator at Loyola. And then I'm also the chair of our behavioral intervention team, our BIT. Um, and this is actually my very favorite thing about Loyola. Um, so the behavioral intervention team is a tool that anyone can use, whether it be a parent, a student, um, a professor, or a staff member. Um, but essentially you can report concerns um, and they can be wide ranging. So it could be homesickness. It could be um, that your student feels lonely and is looking to join a group. Or it could be things like academic concerns or your student has the flu. Um, but we want to encourage you all to, to submit reports if you have any concerns about your student. Um, and you can always let us know if you don't want us to tell them that, that you've submitted a BIT report. Although, of course, we always encourage you to let them know that you're going to submit this report and that we're going to have somebody reach out. Um, so I did put the BIT reporting form in the chat, um, but feel free to reference that if you're ever looking for it on our website. Um, if you go from the Loino homepage, in the top right hand corner, there's a search bar. Type in behavioral intervention team or BIT, B-I-T. And either way, uh, the first website that pops up is going to have the reporting form at the bottom of the page. Um, but if you submit that your student is experiencing homesickness or they're struggling to kind of find their group or make friends, um, there's a lot of things that we can do to reach out. Um, so for example, if they're a residential student, we'll often have their RA check in with them or we'll refer to the one-on-one -on -one meeting that they may have already had with their RA. So if we can try and figure out what they might be interested in. Um, so let's say that your, your student is really interested in doing intramural sports um, and we find that out through their one-on-one their -on -one interview with their RA. What we'll do is we'll have someone from Dale, uh, Dr. O'Neill's shop from Student Life and Ministry reach out and actually ask the student if they want to join an intramural team. Um, so you can always let us know what your student's interested in and um, you know, we can work with them to try and get them connected to a club. Um, we often have their crew leaders who they probably got pretty close to at the beginning of the year reach out to them, ask them to go to coffee, grab lunch, um, ask them to join them at a student event so that they kind of have that buddy to go along with. So don't ever hesitate to submit one of those forms. Um, and you can really normalize it. Last year alone, we received 900 bit reports. Um, and every year that we talk more about it, we get more reports. Um, so it's not a bad thing for, for students to maybe have not found their place yet, to maybe want a little bit of support. Um, so feel free to, to submit that form. And if you ever have questions or concerns about it, or you wanna talk to me about something a little more privately before you submit that form, you can always shoot me an email or give me a call. Um, we're happy to uh, partner with parents and answer any questions. Um, and then, of course, you know, if your student is experiencing any kind of struggles with like a roommate, a friend group, 
Um, you know, my office does formal conduct investigations, but we also do informal mediations. Um, we talk to students a lot about how to have direct conversations with roommates that might be causing them stress, um, especially with the COVID related concerns. So if you have any concerns like that at all, feel free to reach out to me, have your student reach out to me, um, but ultimately we're here to help in any way that we can and we're happy that you've trusted us with your student. Great, thank you everyone. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Zantre. Thank you, Student Affairs team for all of the information and for your time and your energy today. And so now we're gonna review the question and answer um, portal to see if anything came through. Um, let's see, we have one question about um, homesickness trending over a student's four years. Um, and Asia noted that um, homesickness does tend to be more difficult freshman year. And then you have a W adjustment curve where you start at the honeymoon phase, which is a highlight um, leading to homesickness. Um, then establishing some connection routine. Is this all there is? <laughs> Going up and down there. And then finally, you hit up at the adjustment period. So um, as Asia notes, by the end of year one, most students start to feel at home um, at university. I will just wait for a couple of moments and review uh, our last minute um, notes but feel free if anyone has any other questions to go ahead and jot those down and, and we'll get to those. Um, so if you wanna mark your calendars, we have another panel coming up in November. Um, this is gonna be on transitioning home. Um, so transitioning home after COVID is gonna take on a different uh, look in, in comparison to maybe transitioning home um, in the past. That's gonna be November 11th at noon and 5 p.m. Those are both central times. So November 11th, noon and 5 p.m. transitioning home uh, for the holidays post COVID after uh, being on campus during COVID. I also noted a couple of web resources for you in our chat. And I've also um, gone ahead and uh, added a survey. So if um, any of the parents who have attended today's session would like to provide some feedback about our session. We'd love to hear uh, what you liked, what areas that we can improve. And um, I've included the link there in the chat function. Um, so it doesn't look like any other questions have come through. So for all of our attendees, again, thank you for your time today. Um, please don't ever hesitate to reach out if any of us can be of assistance or service to you. And um, again, thank you to our panelists. So wishing everyone a great rest of the week and staying healthy and happy. Thank you all. Bye-bye.